Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 2P Press Start. I'm your host, Giant Killer, and today we're proud to present episode 31 of our top 5 Hearthstone plays of the week. Now let's get right into the action with number 5. Our number 5 play this week was a submission from Trolden, and it features Ecop in a high ranking Warlock mirror match up against CJ. As we join this play, we find Ecop in a tight spot as he's down to 3 life and facing down a nasty board featuring a buffed up Blood Knight. But, Undaunted by his low life, Ecop decides to go all in, life tapping himself down to 1 HP and grabbing exactly the card he needed to stay alive, a Molten Giant, which he casts for free and promptly taunts up with a Defender of Argus. Now on the following turn, he heals himself up with an Earthen Ring Farseer and life taps again, grabbing the Shadow Flame he needs to clear his opponent's board. When CJ's life tap on the following turn fails to match Ecop's RN Genius, he throws in the towel and gives Ecop the win. This week's number 4 play was a submission from Eric C, and it features Bob on Warlock up against Japanda on Druid in some Hearthstone action from the Asia servers. As we join this play on Japanda's turn, he's playing an elite Torrent Chieftain, giving himself a power of the Horde, and giving Bob, uh, well, you'll see. On Bob's turn, he's getting the band back together. He starts out by casting I Am Murloc, giving him 5 Murlocs to buff up his lead singer, Old Murkai, to a 7-4. Bob follows up a power slide from his now beastly Murloc Lord with a stage dive from Leroy Jenkins and backup vocals from back-to-back -back power overwhelmings, giving Bob a perfectly orchestrated win. Our number three clip this week was a submission from Hunter R, and it features For Low Effect on Hunter up against Marklar on Mage in an arena game that's come down to a photo finish. Forlow's rag has to hit face to win, any other result meaning almost certain doom for Forlow on the following turn. And to make matters worse, Marklar's board is completely full, thanks to last turn's Anixia play. But, just like Leroy Jenkins, this Ragnaros doesn't care how many whelps are in the room, he's going in anyway. Rags ignores this target-rich environment, and no-scopes Marklar, giving Forlo the win. This week's number two play was a submission from Carol H, and it features Shortan in a ranked Shaman mirror match up against Arco. And in this play, Shortan's in control of the board, but he doesn't want to give Arco another turn to attempt a comeback. So he starts off by swinging in with his Flame Tongue buffed Defender of Argus, then kills it off with a Lightning Bolt. That gives his next Defender access to the Totem. That Defender swings in, then he kills that one off with a Hex and an Earth Shock. That gives his Argent Squire access to the Totem's plus two attack buff, which gives it just enough attack power for exact lethal. Our number one clip this week was a submission from Margaret H, and it features Dark Wanix on Rogue up against Tice on Shaman in Game 2 of the WEC Winner's Bracket Semifinals. On Tice's turn, he goes all in with an all Akir, bringing Dark Wanix well into range for a burst kill next turn and putting up a shielded taunter, hoping that'll keep him alive long enough to burn Dark Wanix down. Dark Wanix figures out it's do or die this turn and goes in for the kill. Dark Wanix starts out by popping Alakir's Divine Shield with a Shiv, drawing him a Shadow Step. He follows that up by swinging the Weblord into Alakir, making a dagger, and finishing off the Windlord with the SI7 Agent and Dagger combo. He then Shadow Steps his Weblord, bringing his Leroy back down to a castable 4 mana, dropping the Charger, and swinging in with a dynamic duo of Van Cleef and Leroy for exact lethal. And for our bonus clip this week, we bring you the Well-Mannered Weblord. This bonus clip was a submission from Crank, and it features Crank on Warlock up against Zoff on Rogue, in a game Crank's got all but in the bag at this point. With his opponent down to 2 life, all Crank has to do to win is drop his Arcane Golem and hit face. But first, he decides to indulge in a bit of well-earned BM after a hard-fought game. He starts out with a Molten Giant, a Mortal Coil, a Life Tap, and a Flame Imp, and a Weblord. Which unfortunately makes all Battle Cry minions cost 2 more. Now his Arcane Golem costs Crank 5 mana, snatching defeat from the Jaws of Victory. And that's it for Episode 31. Thanks so much for watching and supporting our show. Of course, we're always looking for more great Hearthstone plays to showcase on the series, so if you're interested in submitting a play, please stop by 2ppressstart.com and hit the Submit a Play link for instructions on how to submit a play into the running for next week's episode. And right now, we're working on a special Nexramas-themed episode, so be sure and submit all the plays you can find featuring Nexramas bosses or new Nexramas cards. And finally, if you enjoy our shows and want to help 2P Press Start grow, please click on that subscribe button to join the always growing and always awesome 2P Press Start family. And we'll keep bringing you more great Hearthstone content right here on 2P Press Start.